with the treasured way of life of a peaceful, stable, democratic, and prosperous Uganda. And here I call upon the media really to take the lead in working for that situation, for ensuring peace, for ensuring stability, for, and for the prosperity of the people of Uganda. Uh, the security situation is now very calm, and all people should continue to carry out their businesses normally. And I want to thank, I really want to take this opportunity to thank the young people, the women, the old men, who have been very vigilant, who have been very active, who have been giving us information, who have been cooperating with the security forces, who have cooperated with the government and the other people everywhere to ensure peace and security, in spite of the occasional uh, tensions that, or violence that, turn, that tend to come up. Really, many people have been very helpful, and I want to thank them and use this opportunity that we hope that the media will continue to do the same. For God and my country, I want to thank all of you and wish you a wonderful Uganda to live in together. Young and old, tall and short, black and brown, whoever you are, to ensure that fat and thin, that Uganda is for us all and let us work together. The point is, let us work together for the peace of our country. I thank you. Thank you very much. Honorable General, uh, for purposes of making some clarifications, which some of you have been raising, particularly about these examinations, yes, yes. Uh, allow me to request Honorable Rosa Cheng to come and explain or give light, shed light on a few of those uh, that the people have been contesting about examination, about uh, whether you should uh, allow people to go or not. Please come. Thank you. We will take questions after her. Okay. Good morning to you all. I'm here to make clarifications on how the medical board operates and what happened to said I'm here to make clarifications on how the medical board operates and what happened to the honorable members of parliament regarding their going abroad for medical treatment. First of all, allow me to state here very clearly that the medical board did not delay anyone as has been alleged in the media and openly in the media. As you have heard from the Minister for Security, the medical board to date has not received any request either from Honorable Zake or from Honorable Chagulani requesting for referral abroad. The only request that was received by myself was an update that came from Rubaga Hospital on the 28th of August 2018, and this is the update. It came from Dr. Andrew Sech Toleko, and he was saying, following their contact with the Uganda Medical Board on recommendation of the clerk to parliament, he was giving me an update on Honorable Zake. This was brought to me by the woman MP of Masaka, Honorable Kabanda. When I discussed this with her in my office, she said they wanted a medical referral abroad. And so I did what was right. I referred this to the board. On the 29th, I wrote officially to the board and requested the board to examine Honorable Zake. In his letter to me, Dr. Andrew Sechitoleko also referred 
to a communication from the director CIID requesting for Honorable Zake to be transferred to Mulago. And I did communicate that to the board. On the 30th, which was a Thursday, the director of Mulago, who also received a letter from the CIID requesting for this, for Honorable Zake to be examined, constituted a team and waited in Mulago for Honorable Zake, who did not turn up. We reported this back to the CIID and the CIID mobilized her teams to go and transfer Honorable Zake from Ruvaga to Mulago. Honorable Zake declined transfer. That same evening, Honorable Zake was brought in by the police to Chirudu Hospital about 11 o'clock at night. The same night, Thursday night, Honorable Chagulani was also brought to Chirudu Hospital. The following day on the 31st, the medical board moved to do the needful and Honorable Chagulani willingly accepted to be examined through his lawyers, uh, specifically Counsel Pio Nicholas, and he was duly examined. After his examination, he was released by the police to go wherever he wanted to go. Honorable Zake declined to be examined. Members of the medical board waited outside Honorable Zake's door for four hours on Friday. From 1.30 up to 4.30, he declined to be examined. Thereafter, they left. Honorable Zake only accepted to be examined on Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock after he had interfaced with his lawyers. It was difficult to reconstitute a board on Saturday afternoon and over the weekend to examine Honorable Zake, well aware that many of the diagnostic facilities would also not be operational to the extent that we wanted. We did explain this to the lawyers of Honorable Zake as well to Honorable Zake himself. On Monday morning at 10 o'clock, the constituted medical specialists went and examined Honorable Zake and concluded his examination with investigations and thereafter, we handed him back to the police. And I believe he was released and he traveled wherever he wanted to go. So it is not true that the medical board delayed them. And it is not true that the medical board received any <coughs> official request for referral abroad. But also allow me to state very clearly that there is a guideline for referral of patients abroad that we do follow. And these guidelines cover for those who draw funds from government and for those who want to go out on their own, using their own private money. Now, for those who draw funds from government, the procedure needs to be followed. And our honorable members are part of this team that draw funds from government. The procedure is that the client shall be seen by a duly registered, licensed, and practicing senior government specialist, and preferably a consultant or a senior consultant. The client shall be assessed in a public health facility and in this case, a specialized national or regional referral hospital. The attending specialist 
shall assess the client comprehensively, including investigations, and determine the need for referral based on both clinical and investigative medical evidence. The referring clinician, upon being convinced, will then fill in the referral forms, and the referral forms are available in all these facilities, and write to the secretary or chairperson of the board to bring to his her attention the need for referral, indicating the degree of urgency. Because the guidelines also spells out how to handle what is urgent and what is not so urgent. The board, upon receipt of this request, will reconstitute themselves and summon the referring clinician to defend his her case with evidence and justification highlighting clearly why the patient cannot be treated in country and why such services do not exist. The referring specialist will have made reference to the inventory of specialist services. The board shall take their decision independently without any influence from whatsoever source. But also to take note that for you to be referred abroad, the referring specialist has to be a specialist in the area for which the patient is being referred. Honorable Zake was seen in Rubaga Hospital. He was allegedly tortured. But the people who saw him are not specialists in his area, which he was complaining. Honorable Zake was seen by a physician. He was seen by a family physician. He was seen by an intern doctor, and he was seen by a general surgeon. Now, for us to refer somebody abroad, we also need to save the face of Uganda abroad. You cannot just refer anybody anyhow. The receiving facility that side will wonder whether we have specialists in Uganda who refer anyhow. So we need also to keep our flag held high as Ugandan doctors are known as very good doctors abroad. And that is why the guidelines clearly spell out that you must be seen by a consultant or a senior consultant, not by people who are not specialists in your area of referral. Secondly, for those who are referred out and are privately sponsored, the same procedure follows. You must be seen by a duly registered, licensed, and practicing senior specialist, preferably a consultant, a senior consultant, or the equivalent. And you'll be assessed in either a private, private not-for-profit, or a public health facility, which shall be at the level of a referral facility or higher. When Honorable Zake declined to be shifted to Mulago, I had dialogue with the Honorable MP who was following up his case, and I said, you have another option. You can decide to go out on your own and privately sponsor his treatment. That option is there. But again, you must be cleared by the police because he had a running police case. They opted for that option but apparently they had not sought out clearance from the police. And I believe that is why he was brought back to Chirudu. Upon return from abroad, the medical board also desires accountability. So for anybody, whether going privately or through public resources, when you get back, for those who have used government resources, they must account to the accounting officers of the institutions that have given them money, but also to the board. And the board requires both financial accountability and a comprehensive medical report detailing what was done at the receiving facility, the final diagnosis, and follow-up issues. So these are the procedures that we require uh, to be followed. So upon concluding our report, the medical board is sitting today to finalize the report. And when they are done, 
we shall hand over the report back to the police because it is the police that requested for the examination. I thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Ruth. Now, our Tuesday pressers are usually addressed by the Minister of Information who speaks for government. And today he's represented by Honorable Chris Mariumonsi. And allow me to invite Honorable Chris Mariumonsi to come and also give a communication that Honorable Frank Tumwebazi would have given if he had been here. Honorable. So thank you very much. I just want to thank my colleagues, the Minister for Security and the Minister for Health for the clarification they have made, and also to thank the brothers and sisters from the media for turning up to listen to the government communication. And to say that we shall continue to organize these media briefings so that you report from a point of knowledge. Because sometimes, if there is an information gap, you report things which are not accurate and which do not reflect maybe the truth. And I'm happy that the Minister of Health has been here to clarify issues of referral. Because the other day I was on television and I made reference to the guidelines by the Minister of Health. And some of the members of Parliament called a press conference to condemn me for saying that even when you want to privately fund your referral, there are procedures and I think the Minister of Health has clarified that it's important to save the image of the profession because if you have flu and then they will refer you outside, then the receiving doctor will just wonder whether Uganda cannot manage flu. So it becomes important. So it's not only the issue of funding from government, but also when you are outside the country, there are other medical legal issues which can come up where you may need support of the embassy and so forth and therefore if you have gone through the established procedures it becomes helpful uh, at times we advise people to do full examination supposing you go into a quack facility outside and they cause damage to you they remove your organ and so forth and so forth and then you come with complaints. So it becomes important to have a record, to have a medical records, and the, that needs to be understood. But particularly in this case also, as you heard the Minister for Security explaining, the Uganda Law Society had made a formal complaint, the DPP, that these two members of parliament were tortured. And uh, this matter was sent to police because the question has been why were these members of parliament stopped at the airport? It was important that as the police investigates that matter of torture, that the two members of parliament be examined by the government doctors so that there is a record. I thank you very much. We shall be able to respond to the other issues which will come from the questions or any comments for clarification. But we thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Honorable Police. So now it's time for questions. And uh, as is our custom, we shall be taking sets. But when you are asking your question, it will be useful to refer to the specific person, uh, since there are three of them, who you think will answer it best. So we shall start with you, General Tumwine, uh, uh, to respond to the questions arising out of your communication. So we take. First three, first four, okay. And as usual, you mention your name and your, your, your media house. So, wait, 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 wait. One, two, three, four. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister. <coughs> I'm Edward, I work with Dream uh, Vivian Infrastructure. I'd like to inquire from you. I'd like to inquire from you. In the recent uh, Any of those, and are they yet to be 
journalists when we are trying to cover those events uh, our things are taken we are beaten uh, for your information by the way outside we are we fear to bring our recorders our cameras because they may be taken so how are we going to train to torture people or to protect their lives and human rights thank you number three my name is Kasim Tahira from Azam TV. Question number one is to General Tumwene. I would like to get from you the definition of torture, because from all the evidence that we see, especially from the two MPs who have been at the center of this, we see signs of severe pain that has been inflicted, and yet the government has continued to say there was no torture involved. In your case, how would you define torture? The second question is to Honorable Minister Rupa Chair. We said in terms of uh, before the medical board can refer anyone abroad, it's about face or saving the image of the country. Do you feel ashamed then that we are unable to treat our own in these particular circumstances because the two MPs have flown out? Is it a failure on our part, on our health system? through sharing and learning from one another that we can have uh, a common ground on which we work. Uh, Edward's uh, question was, has anybody been arrested uh, for the killing, for the death of these people? In the case of Kauma, uh, in Arua, that matter is still being investigated. I don't have been calm down. Those seemed to have even realized their mistake, and they went and threw away their guns and ran. Or because even in these cases, which even when you follow on the television, you are all liable to have some soaking. And when you talk about uh, uh, and when you talk about, about torture, you see, the, 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 I'll give the, the, the definition of torture after. But having pain, having injury. I have one. I have an eye injury. And it was in a situation that was violent. And I can tell you I was not tortured. But I was harmed. Now, I have been telling you that I call my gun always Sijisirar Shoma. In Wanyankore, if you make your porridge, it is how you will drink it. If you make it well, you will drink it well. Now, I have talk that sometimes some of these are occupational hazards because the soldiers, the security personnel who get engaged in these violent situations, we always say that the law of the, of the, of the, of the, of the battle changes after the first bullet. Why? Because while you have planned well, while you have a good plan for the battle, after the first bullet, the situation could change and anything could happen. And it depends on the one who is on the ground, who is handling it, who will handle it. So once we are in a riotous situation, anything can happen. And therefore it depends on how well either the commander or how well the security personnel on the ground is handling it. I cannot say that I have the, all the details of what exactly happened. And that's why we have instituted a board of inquiry. Because the board of inquiry investigates and finds, was there a mistake? What was the cause? How did it come about? We don't have all those details as of now, and they will come. So we better wait. And it is not the first time you people have covered 
some of these situations. We've been working with you, and we shall continue working with you. And we have, not only in Uganda, but even all over the world, you see journalists even with armored jackets, you see them with labels, you see, so that they work together. Some are even embedded within our but with, within war. So really, what happened is, not, is something being investigated and should not stop your work. Because if you are going to fear being in a, those difficult situations, you will not get your breaking news. Now, to explain about uh, torture. Torture is well defined in the, in the law. You see, if, 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 if I am arresting you and you are either resisting or there is a scuffle, the, 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 the security forces and the police in the police act uh, even can go, for, you see, they talk of minimum force, but you can even use the firearm, you can even leave the live bullets yeah. in certain situations. And I think I should give you that information. Just a minute. Section 28C. Section 28C. Since, you know, we are in this process of sharing knowledge so that you know you are, you, you, it is important for you to know you are, you are. Now, there are sections I want you to interest you in. You read from section 65 to 72 of the penal code. But section 28 of the police act, it says, that a firearm can be used, forget about a stick, a firearm. A firearm can be used against a person resisting arrest or arrest of another person. If the police says stop, I advise you, do what? Stop. Don't say, I have a right as a journalist to be in this. If they say stop, and this is for advice, by this act, means are ineffective to achieve the intended result. If the intended result is to arrest you and it is, becomes difficult in a riot, in a violent situation, a firearm can be used. Number three, they can be used in self-defense or in defense of others against imminent threat of death or serious injury. If you are about to injure others or even uh, 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 it can be used. Number four, they can be used to prevent the commission of a serious crime involving grave threats to life. If your actions are going to cause a threat to life of others, a firearm can be used. And this is important for the public because you know what, you, what they tell you, minimum force, what? Sometimes it's a misunderstanding because you, don't, you have seen that some policemen, a policeman, actually two, have died as a result of stones. So these are human beings also whom you should deal with with care. It can be used to arrest a person presenting such a danger and resisting police authority. If you resist police authority, a policeman can get away with this if he uses a firearm against you. It can also be used to prevent such a person's escape. If you are trying to run away and they have stopped you Sometimes they fire in the air and you refuse. A live bullet could catch you and you can die legally. <laughs> International use of firearms or lethal force may only be made when strictly unavoidable in order to protect life. So to protect life, as I have said, you could actually die legally. And it could be... Uh, and therefore, now, the definition of torture. Torture is when you have already been arrested, not before. When you have already been arrested, and then you are tortured, either in the custody, either for extorting information, or for whatever reason. But being harmed in the course of arrest, we shall wait for the investigations of what exactly happened since they are going on, and I don't want to interfere with that. But you should go and look at the definition of torture in legal terms, and according to international, uh, international law. Uh, Azam TV, he was also talking about the signs of severe pain. As I have told you, there are many people who have severe pain. You could be running away and you fall down. 
you could hit your head on the wall when you are trying to escape. You could have, so pain could have come in many ways which we shall establish. Uh, Damari was the caterpillar, uh, whether we have found out who is the owner. No, those are investigations still going on. By the way, some of these things are already in courts of law and investigations are going on. For sure, the owner will be known and that one is not a big issue. But the issue is who was behind it and what is going to, that is going to be established. I think with those four, uh, we can continue with another set. So another set. But perhaps they could first, uh, those which were referred, oh, respond to, the, the respond oh, to okay, those okay. which were raised to the others. Yeah, just one for the doctor. Okay. Is there another one? Yes. So I can Yes. About the fate of the study I think that is his question. That we have. As a minister of law, yes. That's not my question. Okay, my question was <coughs> whether it is failure of our systems that the two honorable MPs were flown out. As I earlier on stated, neither of the two honorable MPs requested for medical referral abroad. And I want to be very clear on this issue. The process of medical referral abroad necessitates that you are seen by a consultant or a senior consultant. And this consultant or senior consultant, after examining you and being convinced that you need to be referred abroad, also communicates with the facility that he would like you to go to. We have an inventory of facilities that are authentic and accredited and then gets the costs of the treatment. Thereafter, that consultant or senior consultant fills in a referral form and sends to the medical board with a letter requesting that this client of mine deserves to be referred abroad. The board upon receipt of that request and the forms will then summon the consultant or senior consultant to come and defend his issue why your client should be referred abroad and why your client should not be managed within the country after checking the inventory of services that we have in the country. Therefore, the decision to go abroad by the two honorable members was their own decision and it has nothing to do with the medical board. Um, Regarding the preliminary reports of the medical board, there is nothing significant to warrant referral of the two honorable members abroad. Those are the preliminary reports that I received. But just again, to bring to your attention that it is not only the image of the profession that is at stake. When you make a referral and you are saying further assessment and oh, That is not how we refer. If you are a specialist, you need to be confident of your diagnosis and state clearly that I have examined this patient, these are my findings, and this is the reason why the patient should be referred. You cannot have a staggering opinion. That is not how specialists work. They know what they are doing. It is important to identify an authentic institution to which you are going. It is not all rosy out there. You may go to a quack facility where even your organs will be removed, as Honorable Chris said, or where you will be fleeced of your money and you will not be treated accordingly. So when you're going abroad, the board helps you to go to authentic institutions. But also once you've been referred abroad, our director generals of health services across the world are internationally recognized. So a letter from the director general to the institution to which you have been referred is a very powerful letter. Once you get any complication or in the event that your patient dies, you will not be stranded. The hospital will look at your letter and link up with your embassy and help you to repatriate the body accordingly. But if you go without such a letter, 
it will be very difficult even to be recognized by our embassy. And so once again, our specialists can treat anybody. If we have been operating even the most difficult cases in our, in our heart institute, in our cancer institute, the neurosurgeons have been operating, I don't think they don't have the capability of treating our people unless the medical board has so decided that that particular case cannot be handled within the country. No, 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 we don't do it that way. We don't. We have another set of questions. Okay, okay, that's fine. Let me just supplement what the Honorable Minister of Harris has said. Because somebody asked, are you ashamed as the government, as the Minister of Harris, for failing to manage and treat the MPs since they have gone outside the country? And I think she answered it by saying the preliminary reports indicate that there is nothing which warranted specialized treatment, both here in Uganda and also outside. Meaning that after the examination of the members of parliament, the findings are no more. So other than maybe the politics, from the medical point of view, there wasn't anything that necessitated specialized treatment after the examination of the two members of parliament. So I just wanted to give that clarification. Sorry? Yeah, set of okay. Medical questions. Medical questions. Thank you very much. I'm Jacob okay. Jackson. I work for UBC. Uh, my question Are we seeing, for instance, government taking a step whereby the Waka Hospital will be investigated? Because we have heard of allegations that this suspect, particularly Zake, was feigning his sickness or the injuries. And we saw him at that particular hospital at one moment where he was in oxygen. So from your perspective as a Minister of Health and the doctor as such, was Zake feigning this his sickness? And are we seeing if that's the case, was Lubaga Hospital acting within the laws and the requirements of the profession? Second question, medical only. Yes. Yes. My, name, my name is Patrick Onen. I work with a host of news. Now, quick question. Bobby Wayne, for example, claimed that he was injected while in custody with so many substances. <laughs> is Uganda, or can Uganda maybe protect this news? Because I think that is the main reason that's why he was asking to go out of the A report, a report from the lawyers. Do you have the report? Do you have the report? Or is it allegations from the lawyers? Can you rephrase your question? Because when you talk about a report, it means you have a report like this. Are you talking about allegations or a report? Okay. The, the fourth and last one of this session. Now, uh, something that you keep in my understanding, I'm still at it, uh, from you, vision. Okay. What is a bit in my, my understanding is that if you tell us that there was no need of these people going abroad, actually, maybe they are faking the condition, then as a state, how come that you later uh, authorize them to go? Because we had nine specialists went to Kyoto, they made their assessment and finally agreed that they should be referred abroad. So which is which? Okay. okay. Are we done? Mm. Okay. Thank you for your questions. Let me start from the last. I think I have stated very clearly that the medical board 
and in this case, since you referred to the state, did not release Honorable Zake or Honorable Chagulani with referral letters to go abroad. They went abroad on their own. And the majority of you have been reporting that they went on their own to foot their own bills because we did not refer them abroad. And I have stated clearly that there was nothing significant to warrant their referral abroad. Could we have treated them in country? Yes, we could have treated them in country. But first of all, they didn't want to be touched by our doctors. They declined to be touched by our doctors. They wanted their own doctors. So you should be asking me whether their own doctors failed. So that question should go to their own doctors, not to the government doctors. When you decline to be touched, we don't push you because patients have their rights. You have a right to accept treatment. You have a right to decline treatment. What we do, we explain to you, and then you take an informed decision whether you want to accept treatment or to refuse treatment. Examining them medically was at the request of the police for investigative purposes, which we have done and I have clearly told you that the report will be given to the police. Regarding the report from the lawyers, I don't think lawyers are specialists in this area to start making a report that my client has torn ligaments or my client has this and that. I don't think so. You got the report from Rovaga Hospital? Well, I have the report from Rovaga Hospital and I clearly told you who examined and who examined should be a specialist in that area. I gave you the number of people who examined, a physician who is a doctor who treats people with medical conditions. A family physician is a person who moves from house to house treating people. An intern, you know very well. There was only one general surgeon, not a specialist. So you cannot rely on such a report. And, and, they don't even talk about the kidney in this report. I can read for you their reason for referral. This was their reason for referral. Referral of Honorable Zake to a center for assessment and management of possible post-traumatic stress, poor concussion, post-concussion syndrome, and continued treatment of other injuries. That is their reason for referral. Well, according to the preliminary reports I have, there is nothing like that. And these were the reasons for referral of Honorable Zake. Now, talking about Bobe wine being injected with several drugs, can Uganda detect those things? First of all, let me be very clear that whether you are in police custody or in the custody of the UPDF, they are police doctors and they are UPDF doctors, and they are duly qualified and registered medical practitioners, even at the level of consultants and senior consultants. So it is not that when you go there, any other person will treat you. They will be doctors. And in the case of Bobby Wine, even after treating Bobby Wine, they themselves were able to give us those reports which the board is also considering in conjunction with their medical examination reports. If Honorable Chagulani requested for an analysis of his blood sample regarding medicines that are there at his own request, we can be able to do some analysis in Uganda, but also request for further analysis abroad. So he did not request, and we cannot go ahead to do that because he has his rights. Will Rubaga Hospital be investigated? Was Honorable Zake feigning an illness? Why, was he on oxygen? Those are his rights. He has the right to do anything. We don't have any reason whatsoever to investigate Rubaga Hospital. They have not done anything criminal. Honorable Zake chose out of his own will to go to Rubaga. He chose his own doctors to manage him. So if they so thought that he required oxygen, or if they so thought that he required the treatment that they gave him, it is in their own opinion 
and I hope in the best interest of Honorable Zake. So we shall not investigate Rubaga Hospital. Good. Uh, the, 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 medical, the medical questions are over? All oh, right. So, so let's do it again. Number one. Number one. Number two. You have already had the final. Yes, yes, Harima. Just number one, three. And we finish. And uh, no, no, for you, no. We are here. The last one. We are many. Thank you. My name is Ramsan Mujibu. I'm from Top TV. Uh, maybe you should pass a comment on when the rain rains. Most people are prepared and they know the rain is going to rain. So they tend to go with one weather. When the rain falls. <laughs> Most people prepare for the rain, just like journalists go with gadgets and body armors and press jackets. You know that it's sure it's going to rain, and we are prepared for the rain. But when it rains past the umbrella, then it becomes a different thing. Uh, two, the issue of live bullets. We saw citizens in Indiana being shot from a taxi, innocently, not involved in the rain. There is a case of a Chambogo third year student who was shot innocently, not involved so-called struggles. We are losing innocent lives in this whole circuit. Are we about to stop the use of live bullets in the riots? Because mm -hmm. countering stones with the live bullets it may not be every action calls for equal reaction. That's my point. Mm -hmm. Who was the number two? Um, you were, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Honorable, the, the country seems to be focusing on, on two individuals. That's Honorable Bobby Warren and then uh, what happens to the other 32 suspects who are arrested with them? Are they getting treatment? What is that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Number three was Harima, yeah? Yes, Hello, my name is Harima. I'm smiling for Voice of America. I wanted to find out, in your view, in as far as the whole um, violence is concerned, do you think that we have reached a point where we, we have to use the military, and not just any military, The last one was? This was from what? Voice of America. Voice. Are you sure you're the one I picked? <laughs> <laughs> you are not. Yes, yes, yes. Of course I know who I picked. The tall man there? <laughs> My memory is good. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Don't, don't defraud him. <laughs> but we can concede, and after him, the general will accept that Rukwago, whatever you want, you also, you also put your question. Okay, that will be the fifth that, and the last. That will be the fifth and the last. Okay. The last one. Last one. Thank you very much. Um, once again, I'm Kenneth Lupala. I work with Radio 1 and Radio 2. And I have a couple of questions. No, no, um, no, no, no. One. <laughs> General, won't take a couple of questions. <laughs> Why don't you let me? He has last said one. he's here. He's here. He's here. He for one, one last question. One, because going for um, one last yeah. question. In the wake of uh, this incident of Arua, General Tumina, you've been making a lot of many statements. Some of them have uh, hinged on the political direction of this country. Uh, at one point, you were heard saying that uh, you cannot be pushed out, that uh, it's important for the young people to talk with you, the people who are perceived to be lawyers, in order to solve the political process of this country. I want to know is this an idea that you're saying?
excelling with your fellow comrades with whom you fought. And uh, if that is the case, what kind of uh, discussion are we going to have? Is it for the transition that very many people are talking about? Then, secondly, no. uh, you talked about... Uh, One red flag. Just uh, lastly, you talked about uh, the issues in Arua. There, there have been questions raised in Parliament. Um, and today, you are resuming, and um, I'm looking at the situation where they are still going to raise the same question. The MPs and the uh, entire country want to know the people who tortured Parliament to demand for the names. Are you an MP? <laughs> I don't have to be an MP to ask the question, or to the minister. I'm a journalist. The people want to know um, who beat up the, the, the people in Arua. <coughs> Even the speaker went to the president demanding for the names, and this has caused a stalemate in the house. I wanted to know whether the executive is ready today to present the details of the SFC soldiers who are being asked for. Thank you very much. Okay. First of all, I, 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 in, a general, in a general way, let me first. Uh, I prefer always looking forward. And the, on the general question of how, the, how, do the, how does the media work with security forces in cases, in events like these riots and others. We've actually sat down and said perhaps we've not had a serious discussion to have what we call SOPs, mm. Standard Operation Procedures, which we shall discuss with you, come back, come together and put out for everyone to know what would be the standard operation procedures? How, does, how do we work with the media in situations like this? So that one is coming as a general question or as a general answer to the way forward. But uh, to compare with the question of Top TV about live bullets uh, and having seen some people who have died and how, when shall, when shall uh, bullets uh, not used as opposed stones. I wanted to say that uh, why are people, um, why are there people legally armed by the state and the rest of the citizens are not armed? It's because there are people who are entrusted, who are trained, who are legally armed in the interest of the majority of the public to hold arms, and they are not being holding them for nothing. They are holding them to use them against anybody who violates the peace and security of the country. So we really cannot compare, cannot say, if they are using stones, let the others use stones also. And how, uh, even to answer the question, and uh, uh, which I will come to, I think, perhaps on its own about the use of sticks, but are they... And then somebody asked, are these people getting treatment? First of all, all those who were charged were given a bail. They are free. It's up to them if they need treatment to get treatment or not to get treatment. That one I don't have to spend a lot of time. Now, Voice of America, have we reached a point when the military and the special forces, it's not a... Right from the beginning, the military, first of all, in the armed struggle, are the ones who are working with the civilians, with all of you, with the population, and established a wonderful relationship with the people that have been involved in ensuring not only peace, but bringing about democracy and defending it, ensuring that there is peace and security of Uganda everywhere, it's not something new. Our police are trained not only in police roles, but they are also trained in military tactics, and, uh, and they also operate together with the army. It's not the first time that it ha there has not been any change. Right from when we are dealing with all these insurgents, with all these oppositions, with all these riots, it is within the constitution of Uganda. It is within the laws and standard operating procedures of the police that when there is a need, they call upon the other security forces to reinforce them. So it's not new, 
and it's not any new situation that has happened. No, the red, the red movement is just a new thing which we are dealing with, like terrorism. And whenever a situation comes, we handle it accordingly. It's not something new. Now, Paul asked uh, about uh, uh, querying arrests uh, and of civilians and, and journalists. And at what point uh, are we going to see, uh, he said, when there was, uh, when we shall, uh, the use of canes. Now, if you have not noticed, I want you to notice that if you don't have a gun, an officer has a, a, a cane. Have you ever seen those? Every officer is supposed to have a cane stick. Now, that is a symbol that that one is a commander who might not be carrying the big gun, but he has a cane stick. Now, for us in war, if you don't know, and in case you want to join the army, if we are advancing and we are not moving, your commander is free to beat you to Kusongambere. So, sticks and canes are part and parcel of minimum force to use to cause the necessary situation for peace. So it's not anything new. If you went to all the police, if you went to India, you will see the police with canes, and they are not for beating nothing. If you go anywhere, the police are given what are called batoons. I want actually to encourage our police to get back those batoons. Because they, they, are, more, they, they, they are meant to demobilize you for, from resisting arrest or being violent. Now, these sticks are not as dangerous even as the, as the smaller ones, which are very hard. So don't call for those. Don't create situations. And when uh, the situation stands, is reacted to by the forces, you say, ah, why are they using canes? No, they are officially, they are supposed to have a whistle, a, 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 to have handcuffs, to have those batons, and where necessary have sticks and a gun in addition. So if they are used, don't, they are meant first of all, you know, all those, the best way to stop and create security is the deterrence. Those are meant to make you not confront them, not there, because they are people who hold tools of violence and legally so. So they are meant to deter you from tempting like you would see people, they say stop and you saw the other day, a, a lady was stopped and she was removing barricades, they put them back, oh, <laughs> really if you were you in that situation, if you are, and, I, and you are the one, because I want you to put yourself in that situation, and I want to appeal to you that the history of Uganda and the history of the struggle that has brought us this far has emphasized our relationship with the public relationship with the people and we are not going to stop and it comes with the last point of this idea of which I'm telling young people it's not a new thing that is going to start to tell that young people work well with the old people it's not new it is natural if the young don't work with the old they are the losers because they miss learning from these old people they miss having the trust of these people they miss having the, the both of them understanding and having a win-win. My appeal, and my continuous appeal, and it's not new, it's not that it has started now. I was telling you, I started telling the members of the sixth parliament. They started the, the, the young parliamentary association. So I called some of them, and they were telling us, you dead wood, we want you to go. I said, go slowly. This, that was 19, uh, 2000 and what, and one? Or, or 2006, long ago. And I was, I, I, and that's what I do in Parliament. All these young members of Parliament who come, whom we will come, whom we encourage, is please learn from these old people, learn, discuss with them, see their ideas. They are tested, they are experienced, they are powerful, they are knowledgeable, and they are entrenched in their positions. I, I, even in, in a home, my advice is talk to your parents. Even if they are bad, they could be tough. Even in the bush, we had a, a lecture, we had a subject, a revolutionary methods of work. How do you work with a difficult commander? The first thing you must ensure, now hear me, this is from learning, because it's a, a subject for learning. The first thing you must do with a difficult commander is give him his respect, salute him very much. 
Sir, before you come and hey, I want to say this. No. Give him his due respect. Humbly. And then tell him what you want to tell him. But if you come with, uh, I want you to introduce this or to say this, he has the powers to say, keep quiet. Now, that's what I'm not saying, that you people should keep quiet. Fortunately, the process of our struggle has brought all the young people and has empowered you, the young people, to work and for your future, to work together. Don't create unnecessary bridges. Don't create unnecessary barriers of, of, of generational barriers. And, it, and, and make it a point, oh, we are many, be careful, because it's not always the many who move things. People do not do what they should, they do what they understand. If you don't understand something well, you will not do it well. So understanding comes from that discussion I'm talking about, understanding having this time like we are having with the media, understanding comes from having a forum where you sit together, not where you are violently demanding your rights, from people who are armed, from people who have gone through that experience, from people who are saying, let's talk together. There is a forum, there are councils at the district level, there is parliament at the national level, there are open discussions on all the televisions and the radios of Uganda. The freedom of Ugandan people to say what they want is at its best, and you misuse it with violence. That's my appeal, the method, rather than the idea. The idea of young people taking charge we support it, and we shall defend it and protect it, and encourage you to take it, not to violently use the democratic and legal means. Right. Thank you, Honorable General. And uh, my, my question uh, remains hanging. Which one? Which, which one? On the issue of the SFC. No, the SFC. I told you are uh, part and parcel of the uh, of the military. So whenever there is a need, not only SFC. UPDF, the Air Force, military police. military police, or the arms of the security forces will be used where necessary. All right. No, 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 no Anderson, no, no. Let's, we can't continue like that. We can't continue like that. No, no, no. He's saying, you see, you see, you people go, go carefully. For everything, for everything we, we say, we follow standard operational procedures. The media, has accused, has tried, and has sentenced people without investigations. And you are talking of parading. When do you parade? We after investigations or before? You first investigate, get the facts, then act. And we are better at it, by the way, you people who are talking of disciplining. We have disciplined our armed forces, and that's why they have been very well disciplined. And they are an example on the continent on the issue of discipline. We have disciplined our forces seriously. We have been very tough on them. We have executed some of them without the media, without the media telling us. Nobody is better off to uh, explain to us and to demand from us on how to discipline our soldiers. It is in our interest. It is in the interest of our whole cause, of our whole sacrifice, that we have a disciplined armed force, we have a disciplined police. We do not condone and take it from me. I'm a very tough disciplinarian in the armed forces and in the, even in my home. And I, I, that does not mean that I am not friendly to the people. No. The, what has brought us this far is the discipline of our security forces. If it was another force, there was a lot of restraint in Arua. I want you to report it. Restraint. You shoot the convoy of the president and nobody was killed. I, I, I mean, very few people were, were, were harmed. Please, that was restrained because of the discipline of our armed forces. They handle you with care because of our discipline. But when you take it for granted and you want to abuse their awareness, they have a right to defend themselves. And they can defend it if they are proven that it was in circumstances which were beyond their control. So really, let's have a partnership. The word I insist. And I insist, brothers and sisters and our children, we want partnership, win-win situation. Don't want to take your message, breaking news when your country, you are, you are throwing your country in chaos. I have been seeing how the media and the journalists make your headlines. You put a television, you put a statement or a headline, MPs are on strike. 
a strike, you know how a strike is? A strike. Uh, and you, or you put a caption on your TV, and afterwards you put a disclaimer. The information of this is not, uh, what was said is not, uh, I have been saying, is not the, the, the TV. No, you put a, uh, that strip which you put down is your journalist's responsibility. Have you seen that? The heading you put when the body is talking of something else is your responsibility. Don't put a disclaimer. After you, the journalist, you have edited some things, you have made your own personal firm statements. For example, you are making some judicial statements on those TVs, not, not the ones you are interviewing. So really, I'm advising you, take responsibility where you are found guilty. I thank you. Right, 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 so we don't have really to, to raise our tempers and temperature here. So it's not right. It's not right. Can I suggest something? Yes, sir. You know, I, I'm glad I'm glad you are raising this. You see, that we have never we have never shied away on finding solutions. Things happen when people meet. Now, if we don't have a, a dialogue or a time when we can sit and talk, then we shall have these attitudes. So I suggest, and we have agreed already with some of the journalists. We are going to have more meetings and we shall invite you. Let us come and sit down and discuss together. And, and as I have said, we work out uh, s s standard operating procedures. I am, it's not intimidating anybody. When I tell you the truth, whether you listen or you take it, I am giving you the facts which I think. So I am available, we are available, and we have agreed in our security circles. Let's have more engagement and with you, the media. You are part and parcel of us because you are doing a very good job. Therefore, I don't want you to say that we are against you. Or we are, if the media is against us, we expose it. If we do things, you expose us. So it's really heresy. And we subscribe to that freedom, but we should not abuse it. Oh, Muruganda. Because it's important, we have three name Kutuminji, Muruganda, Mu television is a radio. Ngenda ku mufunze o kuga kogera betuba de owa no uh simanyo ba whatever you must may add in Uganda. Naye echkuru chetuba de ko kwekwanyo nyura. Kwekwanyo nyura mufunze e wotwa na wa statement m parliament a weeks weeks bid is wed day, nga twogera kubiri wo ebiadja ngatuva ebyalete bwo kulonda okwali mu constituency ezimu uh, nadala yasemba yo endala zagenda bulungi okujjako eyali mwaka vuyo yali ye rukunjiri ye jinja bujiri nene yasemba ye yaluwa yaletera dalala omtawana bwe bako be motoka ya president ne wafira mu no muntu Kauma, Yasin. Nechireta Okwata, Siba member of parliament, Tuko Kabariyo, Na ye naba antwa balala, Asatu mubwa satu wibaka tuwa la mukoti, Na balala jebali jebali wakwata, Mbavuri de, Ngabu wibia genze, Okuvabu wibaka wakwata, Hwena uh, lewechagura nye, Lewa msoka mkoti ya maje, Ne uruvanyo, Lewa mtuwara mwya koti ya e, guru, Bora ne baba cha kubeiro na e babiri abagenda abagenda rubaga kujia njia bivua ngapo baba hariba agara zake yatoroka mu police muarua neleta na njia rubaga kati baba saba okugenda bweiro ngapo baba mzee the law society. Uganda Law Society, nge mazo kutwara okwe mulugunya kwa we, wa DPP. Chari chikuru nyo, okubake vera, 
anga no, no kaka soba biba yogera obarigation de zari wo zari ntufu basi ntufu uh, hona lebo chagulanyi yete ya te, 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 te ya gana nyo ya kiliza yeba mkebera na agenda ewelu zake na gana okumane na kwezi singa musatu nga aganye okumere wa kwa basa wa government okutusa kumande ebweba bweba bweya kiriza nga bamaze okumusinyo nyora kubanga wali ona abalala bali abayita mu lecho ona lebo namboze ona lebo kazi mr mwame kazinda na yagita yo na balala ndikubanga chikuru omukuru we bya minister wa heresa anyonyo dewa no rwachi cheta agisecho bweba bweba yakiriza lebo mukebera nga amaze okumutya ko musango go bweya toroka ko mwarua ogwa treason nibamuwa police bond na agenda ekikuru kyetu bade twogera ko nkoragana ki ya fefena abama ulire bantu ba bulijjo abakulembeze tukoragana tutya okulaba ntibye tukola byonna tebiti obola dembe lyo buntu tebiti obola mirembe je twina tukwatanira wamu atine tteka ko nkoragana wetu ba obera wakavuyo ba journalists abama ulire bakora tukoragana tutya nabo tukiriziganye wano tujja kubanga tuogera tukorere wa mufena nadala okunyonyora nadala abavubuka okubanyonyora nti si kirungi okwekunga nti kubanga muri bato ate muri banji mujja mujja kuleta mujja kozesa akavuyo okucyusa obukulembeze kyemba demba gamba kubaga amantu muleme tuogere mwogere na bakuru tunonye wona wetufunira wena wetu go wetufunira mu Burundi ngati waliwo kulwana ngati waliwo kwe karakasa tutese twine bisera byona byetwagala twine dembe lyo twagala twine mkutu ya za radio ne za television zona ye twagala byona we biri ebitu yamba okogera wa mu kifo cyo kozese kubo elimu elchamu elya violence oba elyo ku okonona emirembe ya bonna mwaraba ebitandise kuyingira mu bayimbi omuyimbi nga ye muyimbi nzendi artist mbasaba banange muleme ba artist baba bayimbe ba, 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 ba bayiye bagire bomba teka mu violence bomba teka mu muono na bingi nyo 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 nolwe cyo mba, mbasaba abavubuka mwe na te muono na mirembe je twina twatagande wa mu government egenda kwa racho ne kiriwo atemba ga matamba je na ne biyo bitongole byo ne biye biye bikume mirembe bigenda bikorera wa mu nyoka twina team enunji okuraba ante gwanga lya fetu wali wali onona mwe bale nyo tukorere wa mu katonda bakume emirembe bere na mu Yeah, we are through. We are through, yeah. Mbaga, 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 yeah. Mb